Right, so here's your home learning sheet for Tuesday. So watch the video, hopefully learning about world habitats. And then what your task is today is this. Decide whether you would like to study tropical rainforests or polar regions. Look in the folder for lots of information about your chosen habitat. Make some notes to include in your report later in the week. You could write these up in your exercise book or type them up. And then it tells you, make sure that you include. So remember today, you're just looking at the habitat and it tells you, you could include information about what makes that kind of habitat special and unique, the kinds of animals and maybe plants which live there, how and why the habitat is under threat. And then some additional things if you would like to, like a picture or some artwork, um, and then a challenge as well. But we're not going to talk about that just now. I want to carry on explaining to you about research because what I have purposefully done this for this activity is I've provided you with some information and then lots of other ways that you can go off and find out more. But what you need to do is carry on yesterday what you were doing a great job of sifting through to find the most important information. Now you can look on Google to find this, but I have given you some information to start you off because you want a little bit more detail, you might find that easier. So what you would do is you would go to the file that I have shown that I have sent you and there are two folders. There's one set of information about polar regions and there is one about tropical rainforests. Now you need to decide which one you would like to study. If you're not sure yet go off and find out about both and see which one interests you but maybe you've already decided that from the information that's been on the PowerPoint that we've looked at so far. Don't spend hours and hours and hours deciding. Have a little look, make a choice. So you could have a look at the information in these folders. I'm going to choose polar regions. So that means that all the information about tropical rainforests for my research project, I don't need to worry about because I'm not going to study those. I'm just going to study polar regions. Now in here, I have pulled together lots of different files with lots of information about polar regions. And we need to decide which ones are relevant for today. That is a skill in itself. You do not need to open every single one of these documents and read every single thing on there because that is not what uh, really good research looks like. Really good research shows that you are able to find the exact information that you need and just use that. So you need to have a look at the names of the files because I will give those will give you a clue. So for example, this one's all about Antarctic animals. Well, we're not looking at the animals specifically until tomorrow. Today we're looking at habitats. So we just want things that say habitats. So there's a Arctic animals habitat PowerPoint and there's a climate change in the polar regions PowerPoint. Now we know that climate change is going to be one of the reasons why that uh, the animals there are endangered. So that might be a good one to look at too. So you decide which one you want to look at first. I'm going to choose the top one, Arctic animals habitat. So you just click on it to open it up. Now remember that not all of this information is going to be relevant to you. You've got to sift through and find the right information. So if I've given you a PowerPoint to look at, look at the title of each slide in the same way that you would use the contents page in a book. Okay, so have a look. There's a page about polar bears. There's a page about Arctic hares. So it tells you about all these different types of animals. Now that's great, uh, but what we want to do today is find out um, about the habitat in particular. One of your questions was, what types of animals live there? So actually, in answer to that question, you could just list some of these animals, and if you wanted to use some more information, you could. But in answer to that question, you could just write husky walrus, seal, do you see? And then you don't need to worry about the rest of the information that's on there because that might be more relevant for tomorrow. So actually, that's the only information that we needed from that PowerPoint. Now I'm going to try the climate change PowerPoint. And you do it in exactly the same way. Read the aim and find out whether it sounds relevant to what you're trying to do. To understand how climate change affects the polar regions, absolutely. Because if we go back to our home learning sheet, it says, make sure you include information about what makes that habitat special and unique. Well, animals and plants live there, we've already done that, and how and why the habitat is under threat. So this is going to help us with why it's under threat. So you could have a flick through and you can either navigate down the side here or you can turn it into a slideshow, that's up to you. So where are the polar regions? You might decide that you wanted to include that information. Who lives there? 
which animals are there. And look, that's the same information that was on the last PowerPoint. You will find that a lot, that it repeats information. So you don't need to write it down every time. If you wrote it down last time and you got the information that you thought was useful or relevant, you listed three animals that you found interesting or whatever, you don't need to put anything else. You're sifting through for the most important information. But here, look, it starts to talk about what is climate what is climate change? And then it will explain the impact of that for you on the polar regions. So there is some brilliant information for you to include. Remember, you'll find loads of information on YouTube if you prefer watching videos. There's some great hidden planet stuff. Um, you could go on a virtual tour of one of the museums or zoos. There's all kinds of different ways that you could find this information. But the important thing is that you stick to the questions that you're being asked and don't be bogged down with too much information Information. You can pause things as you go, you can make notes, you can draw pictures, but sift through and find the information that you need. And if you had already written a list of six animals from one uh, article or piece of evidence that you found, and then you decide to watch something on YouTube and that tells you another six animals, you don't necessarily need to include all 12 animals. That's your choice because that's what your research is, remember, just going through to find the most important and relevant information and you can um, record this any way that you would like to but remember that you need to be able to refer back to it um, when you come to write it up later in the week so you might draw some pictures you might do some sketches and some notes you might do some kind of thinking map you might write a list you might keep a bookmark of interesting websites you might copy and paste some things have a little experiment and find out which ways of researching things works well for you because today and this week we are being research scientists good luck with it <laughs>